Working in the heat sucks. And in my almost 20 years of construction, I've seen more than a few people drop from heat exhaustion. Welcome, I'm Carl Murawski. This is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. Level one, I would consider anywhere from 75 to 85 degrees, which is pretty much like, you know it's gonna be warm during the day, you gotta work out in it. Make sure that you find shade and you stay hydrated, you take care of yourself. We're talking about the gear here, but staying safe actually has a lot more elements to it. Now, all the products that I mentioned will be listed in the description below, but check out their lighter colors as well, because wearing darker colors in the sun, pick whites, tans, brighter colors, stuff like that, it does make a difference. Now, starting off with pants, I have really come to love the 1620 Shop pants. They're light, they're flexible. Also, True Work has their T2s, or when it gets a little bit warmer, their T1 pants. It's a far cry from duck canvas or heavy denim on those hot days. Now, if you could wear a t-shirt at work, I really like the Force Tees from Carhartt, but Dickies also has their Temp IQ range. If you can wear a collared shirt or even a button-up shirt, sometimes it's required for where you're working, look for some vented options. There are ones out there like this Filson, which actually has a whole vent in the back of it, and it's light, light material, so it really helps with breathability. Now, people always ask me, what kind of socks should I wear in the summertime? A lot of people like cotton, but my money is always on thinner wool socks. Darn Tough Vermont has some, Smart Wool also has some. Now, as far as accessories, one of the things that made a big difference for me is I bought a pair of polarized safety glasses. Your company will issue you safety glasses. Oftentimes, they're either indoor, clear, indoor slash outdoor, which have sort of a mirror tint to them, but they really don't work very well in either place. And then they have tinted ones, which are almost like sunglasses. But the difference between polarized and non-polarized makes, makes a world of difference. Number one with glare, but just, you know, your eyes strain during the day. So I bought one of these a while ago. I think they're by Crossfire. They were like 20 or 30 bucks. They really weren't that bad. And I still wear them. Another thing that made a big difference is I actually bought a hard hat that had vents in the ridge, which allows the, the air to circulate through it. On top of that, you can get sweatbands. They make terry cloth bands that you can actually take off and wash. There's another company out there, Chuck Star Leather, that actually makes leather sweatbands, so people prefer that. And finally, sunscreen. God damn it, wear your sunscreen. Okay, level two, anywhere between 85 and 95 degree days. These are the days where you wake up and you go, oh. Well, this is where technology is really our friend because as much as I love traditional stuff, canvas, denim, all that, and I'm gonna give you a little example here, okay? You're working out in the, the field, it's maybe 11 o'clock, so you got a pretty good coating of sweat going. You gotta crouch down to get something, you can stand back up. Guys with the hair on our legs and stuff like that, it's just like ingrown hair city because you have clammy skin, wet skin, and you got duck canvas that does not forgive dragging over your skin or denim or any of those things. It's, it's just a recipe for disaster. Now for pants, I haven't found anything better than the True Work T1 or the Dickies Temp IQ. I think they're the cargo pants. Those are my two go-to for this temperature range. They're both thin and the Dickies Temp IQ has some sort of Heat, of, heat activated thing in the fabric where it cools you off. I don't know how they do it, but it's actually pretty effective. Now for a shirt, True Work does have a nice thin shirt. A lot of times in this heat and in that kind of sun exposure, I see a lot of guys wearing long sleeves, um, especially when we're on the railroad, a lot of guys would wear long sleeve just to protect themselves from the sun. So True Work has a great t-shirt. Dickies Temp IQ, as I mentioned, and Carhartt just came out with their LWD, which is their lightweight, durable line. It's incredibly thin. It feels more like a gym shirt than anything else, but you do have to be careful because depending on what you're doing, these tech fabrics might not be what you need. It's really difficult to get any kind of, you know, fabric that's stretchy and all that to work with high temperature environments like welding slag, like sparks, like electricity. Things like that, workplace hazards, you always have to go with what's safe. However, if you're working as a laborer or a landscaper or you're just working outside, these fabrics should work just fine. Now for accessories, there's a company, I think they're actually called Brass Knuckle and they make a pair of safety goggles that actually seals to your face. So when you're sweating, it's not going behind your safety glasses, which can be a real pain in the neck. It actually sort of creates a bit of a gutter, so it'll go off to the sides. This is probably a good enough time as any to start talking about underwear because there are a lot of great different pouch underwear. And I know that one, I think sheath was actually invented by a veteran who was working over in Afghanistan. He was deployed over there and just the heat was was killing him as far as chafing goes, right? So he decided to come up with this, this underwear that basically separates all your bits, right? And keeps everything in its own little compartment. 
I have noticed that this works incredibly well. My preferred brand is a brand called Two Under. I believe they're from Australia. Sheath is another one, but there's a lot of them out there. It's certainly worth looking into. And there are even companies that offer cooling underwear, which again, gets activated by sweat or something, and it'll actually cool you down. Now, speaking of being cooled down, there are also cooling bandanas. These are really interesting, and somebody was wearing one last year, and I was like, what is that thing that you have around your neck? And he showed it to me. Basically, what you do is you dunk it in water, and you kind of snap it, and then the thing just cools you all day. So you can wear it around your neck. You could stuff it inside your hard hat. You could do all kinds of different things with it to just sort of keep you cool. I've also seen people wear safety harnesses, because sometimes what you have to do is you have to wear a vest, right? So no matter what you wear, you have to put a damn vest over the top of that, which is like wearing a trash bag. But they do have safety harnesses, which actually have the reflective strips coming down like this, like suspenders, to a little belt. And this is about as minimal as you can get while still being compliant with high-vis regulations. There's a pretty interesting hard hat insert which cools you off as well. I can't remember if you have to freeze this one or if you just wet it or something like that, but it's a good way to keep, you know, your dome nice and cool. One of the things that I started doing when I was working on the railroad was I got a hard hat visor. We wear full brim hard hats for the rain and for the sun, but they also make like an approved accessory. MSA makes one for, for that to particular hard hat back there, which goes on and it makes it like a sombrero, except for in the front, you have a clear section that's actually tinted so you can look up above you and you don't have any sort of visible obstruction. It makes you look like you're a satellite dish when you're standing out there on the side of the railroad or working wherever you are. Certainly don't try to walk between studs with one of these things on. You're basically creating your own shade. And this is one of those things that you'll put on your hard hat, you'll go out there and people will laugh. They'll be like, what in the hell are you wearing? But guaranteed when it starts to get a little warmer, they're gonna ask you where you got it. Now when it comes to work boots, there are brands like Keen Timberland and Thorogood who offer lightweight, breathable, safety compliant boots. Personally, I really don't like these. They're full of synthetic materials that just don't break into your feet. I prefer wearing my normal work boots. It sounds kind of silly. I usually go with something a little bit shorter if I can, a six inch as compared to maybe a 10 or an eight. I've just found that these are way more comfortable, way more durable. And you know, you made that investment in boots and it makes it kind of silly not to use them when you can. All right, level three is anything north of 95 degrees in my opinion, because oftentimes what they'll do is they'll move the shift. Now in these types of conditions, you're really looking at needing some supplemental cooling, especially if it starts to get north of 100 degrees. Now I'm aware that being up here in New England, what do I know about the real heat? I hear the same thing when it comes to cold and people in Alberta, Canada are telling me that I know nothing about the cold. But what I do know is that when I get really cold or if I get really hot, there are certain things that I need to make myself more comfortable. Some companies do offer vented pants and oftentimes what you have to do is you have to start shopping in like the hiking section for this kind of stuff. There's a company called CQR and they make these pants with vents behind the knees. A little bit of ventilation really goes a long way. There is a circulating cooling vest which actually will circulate water around your torso all day long. So this is nothing that I would put on if I was just gonna go and work and it was 95 degrees out. I'm talking about the upper tiers of that. Makita also makes, I'm trying not to laugh when I say this, a fan jacket, all right? And I bought one just for this video because I had to see this thing. And the idea is more or less that it just keeps blowing fresh air inside of this jacket. They're light colors, so they, they reflect the sun's rays, but they also give you full coverage. So, you know, worrying about the sun exposure is less of an issue. But if you have a Makita tool in your arsenal and you have an 18 volt, I think they're called the LXT or something like that, uh, these things actually are a pretty good solution, as silly as they look. And hey, while you're at it, why not get yourself a hard hat fan? Klein makes one, and it actually mounts right to their hard hats, and it blows air inside of your hard hat. If you had that thing going and that Makita fan jacket on, you're basically a walking air conditioner. Did you know I also did a video like this about working in the cold? In that video, I basically broke down three levels of cold weather workwear all the way from, you know, it's not too bad out to, oh my God, I'm gonna die workwear. And you can go ahead and check that out here. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you next time.